How's everybody doing out there? Let's get right to the spiciness. Right off the bat, I've got uh, what I'm going to guess is a very experienced YouTuber here, Don-SX5XV. Uh, I have to imagine that uh, they're very experienced in creating and publishing YouTube videos, that they're very experienced in putting on webinars and and things like that. And so they're in a position to tell someone like me, who's only been doing it for six plus years or so with hundreds of students all over the earth and not about 900 videos, they're in a position to tell me how I can do things better. So I'm very blessed to have someone with such a huge amount of knowledge share it with me. How magnanimous of them. So they say, my friend, now I, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever met Don, so uh, that's pushing it a little bit, but my friend, there are several documents that you can reference when presenting your webinars, including many varieties of dictionaries. Please use them. Hmm. Wow. Where would I be without such innovative thinkers like Don? Me, who was an English major in college back in the mid-90s. Me, who is a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar tutor for over six years. I would have never thought to use a dictionary. <laughs> wow, okay. Please also listen to the broadcast before posting for such an important topic. Your presentation sounds more like a 70s sci-fi movie. Oh, they must also be super experienced and an expert on publishing YouTube videos. I only have, I'm sorry, Don, I only have about 900 or so videos on my channel. I've only been investing only thousands and thousands of hours in publishing these videos. I'm sure you have way more experience than me. So if you don't mind, you know, please continue to bless me with your innovative and creative knowledge dumps uh, because I for sure will be listening and, and awaiting your comments, criticisms, and suggestions with bated breath. I mean, this is going to change my whole, this is just going to rock my whole world here. My whole construct is going to flip on its ear because of, of what Don's saying here. Thumbs up, bro. Keep it coming. Thanks. Next comment comes from Jeanette Jensen, 8241, and they say, I'm curious how these two men express their rights to title. Maybe a UCC-1 financing statement filed in District of Columbia, notice of lien, or maybe court order. I'll have to research since I believe courts only recognize lien interest. Well, here's the thing, Jeanette. I can 100% guarantee that you don't know the first thing about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, or how, therefore, or how it works. Everything you just mentioned there has nothing to do with correct sentence structure in the domain that it exists in. All those things you mentioned are fiction system bullshit. So I'm just going to go down your, your comment here and address your points. You say you're curious how these two men express their rights to title. What is a right? A right comes from an authority. So in order for them to express such rights, they have to recognize an authority over them, which they do not. And in correct sentence structure, the only authority is the author. Think about it. I try to phrase these things and gear them towards the beginners, such as Jeanette. I mean, I don't know if she has an interest in learning this grammar technology or not. She's been around here for a while, at least a year or so, and I can see that she hasn't really made any progress with the grammar or with the psychology of the grammar. So I'm trying to address it and speak to her in, in the manner that will perhaps not only draw her interest into studying this grammar, rather than studying the fiction, but also to answer 
or uh, satisfy her curiosity. So then she says, maybe a UCC1 financing statement filed in District of Columbia. So why, why the hell would they do that? Then they would be giving jurisdiction to the District of Columbia or whatever court that is or whatever uh, venue that is. And UCC codes are complete fiction system jurisdiction. So if you're doing things with UCC, you're giving jurisdiction to the fiction. You are still under the yoke of the very system that you're trying to extricate yourself from. So why would you do that? Unless you're having success with it. I mean, hey, far be it from me to criticize anyone that has success using fiction against fiction. The point being, this domain, Jeanette, is quantum grammar domain. It's correct sentence structure, communication, parsing syntax, grammar domain. It has nothing to do with UCC codes, financing statements, District of Columbia, notice of lien, or anything like that. It's the domain of fact, not the domain of fiction. Court order. Court orders are fiction. Court orders have no jurisdiction and have no authority in the domain of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I'll have to research. Yeah, you'll, you'll most definitely have to do that um, if you want to cognize what I'm sharing with you. I believe courts only recognize lien interest. Courts only recognize exactly lien interest or other no contract, fiction babble, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fictitious conveyance of grammar, BS. You're 100% correct. I mean, look at all those no contract words right in a row. Have, to, research, believe, only, recognize, interest, all no contract. You would never use those words in a correct sentence structure contract. So thank you very much for the comment. I hope this helps your cognition of your curiosity. Or actually, I hope it helps to satisfy your curiosity by giving you a small bit of cognition on this scenario. But you're probably never really going to fully get it unless you actually literally start learning this grammar, put boots on the ground, and start grinding. Which, to my eyes, as a tutor doing this for six years, you have not done. You have not even begun to do that. So again, thank you for the comment. Now we're going to move over to the TikToks. And uh, we got a, a comment from David Parsons. And David says, Russell is a fraud. And David Wim Miller also. Rest his soul. So I ask, I'm curious as to your proof of such a claim. Do you have any? And then David responds, do you have... Do your have any facts when man was created and there was no language and it's man-made? Prove me wrong with facts. What in the frick does that have to do with the question I asked? The burden of proof is on the individual who makes the claim. David, instead of answering my question, instead of providing proof of his claim that Russell was a fraud and David Wynn Miller also, they try and spin it and throw it back on me. And then they um, fire off another comment. They say, yes, way before man was created, the language was never proven. Any facts. It's just a belief system. Do you have any facts? True statement about it. 100. And using simple logic, my kuleana is then by your logic, you are also a fraud. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My wife finds it hilarious that I laugh at my own jokes. And my response to that is, well, no one else laughs at him, so I might as well, right? Thanks for coming out, David. Mike Davis 4542 says, Russell J. Gould is the Postmaster General. And then they say, Russell J. Gould is coming. <laughs> if I had a troy ounce of silver for every time I heard some goofball 
And yes, I'm name calling. Because in my opinion, folks like Mike Davis are goofballs. And if they're going to come here with that energy, then that's the energy they're going to get back. I mean, he's calling Russell J. Gould names. He's calling him Postmaster General. So he's name calling also. So I get uh, comments like this and communications like this every so often from folks that normally they're probably new to this and they get caught up in the web of the of of this Russell J Gould and his syntax learning center well not his syntax learning center but the syntax learning center which used to be the quantum community which used to be the red thumb club whatever they are you know they change their name every so often in revenue but they get caught up in that. They throw some money down. They pay a couple hundred bucks for a live life claim. And they pay, you know, maybe a thousand or two thousand bucks or even a million bucks. I don't even know what they charge for syntax lessons. And they think they know something. And then they come here and do this. And they spam comments, which you will see uh, that, that they do this. And then when I answer the comments, they, they never respond back. Um, ever. And they certainly never come onto my live streams. One thing I would like to point out real quick in all seriousness, their first little comment there, the uh, Russell J. Gould is the Postmaster General. Adjective, 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 pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun. I have shown, I have done forensics and shown in a video that the claim that Russell makes of being Postmaster General is a very tenuous one. Because by Russell's own words, in the public, on YouTube in a video, he has said that cursive writing is like italics and it doesn't exist according to Styles manuals and according to, you know, the... the Grammar mechanics in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. You would not use italics. You would not use cursive writing. You wouldn't use parentheses, uh, quotation marks, brackets, so on and so forth. Takes it off the page, right? That's why we print the autograph with the punctuation in it. Well, if you look at his uh, documentation of the reason, or uh, actually we could say the evidence of his claim that he is Postmaster General, you see the bullet stamp from the post office, and he writes in cursive Russell J. Gould over that bullet stamp, so that it's not there by his own teaching. So therefore, it's a tenuous claim if it even is a claim at all. Just saying, as I stated, these individuals spam these comments, and this is on another video. They, they spammed, Russell J. Gould is coming. Adjective, 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 pronoun. <sighs> but he's been... That's just a weird thing to say to me. Russell J. Gould is coming. Well, good for Russell. I hope it's enjoyable for him. <laughs> What the hell? Oh, man. All right. Ever since Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller passed away, this has been going on. David was the master. Russell, the apprentice. The master dies, and suddenly the apprentice tries to come forth and change everything, bottleneck everything, put a dollar sign on everything, classify everything. Only problem with that is, folks, that what Russell J. Gould is doing grammatically in his documents, all the documents that I've ever seen in the public, none of it is correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. There are mistakes over all of his documents, dozens of mistakes. Also, the flag he's been using, the one by 1.9 flag has a spire on top of it which means what by his own words he's at war with the people it's martial law 
And according to the man who brought all this forth and was sharing all this knowledge, Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, any modification of the flag, such as putting a spire on top of your flag, negates the constitution of that flag. So Russell's not even using a correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar flag, which makes sense because he's not using correct sentence structure. So anyways, oof. Next comment comes from CD Mesker 3081, and they say, for the polite hyphen volition of the social construct is with the manners of the Cynthia. Okay, so I'll just do a quick audit of this sentence. I see a hyphen between polite volition, which is correct because a compound fact brings two sevens, two facts together, and connects them with a hyphen, so it becomes one seven. And then they have social construct, but that is not a hyphen. That is a dash, and not only is it a dash, it's a long dash. So that is a break in the continuance of the evidence. So that throws the whole thing into adverb, adjective, pronoun. That little mistake right there. I'm sure Cynthia did not mean to do that. But it is what it is. It's a huge mistake. And then we have with the manners of the Cynthia. So we have the colon and then a space and then Cynthia. It does not end on an authority. That is also incorrect. Now a quick fix to that, to this whole thing, would be to replace the long dash with a hyphen. Put a space between the S and the colon and put the colon tight up against the C in Cynthia. And this is the stuff that separates the folks who are going to have success with this grammar and the folks who are probably going to find it a little bit challenging. You have to be laser-like with your audits, with your precision. I mean, as I've said it again and again, I take this grammar as very sacred, very serious. When I write out a correct sentence structure, I go over it three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. I check it. There's nothing casual about this or lazy about this. And I mean, you can write however you want an adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, but if you're going to come here and use this grammar, then I'm going to audit it and call you to the carpet on it. And if you're not being serious about it, if you're not taking it serious, if it's not important enough to you to be correct grammatically, then I'm going to tell you about it. Last comment comes from Magical Fluid Process. Longtime viewer. And they say, that's very philosophical from you, Jason. Laughing face with tears. I agree with you, though. So... What they're commenting on was a post that I put in my community section where I said, if you learn something of value for, actually, let's go look at it. If you learn something of value from someone, if you gain value from another source, it is a maintenance of rule one and rule equal to give back value to that source. If you don't, life will find a way to nullify your gains and stifle your progress. If you give back, your gains will multiply to your benefit. That's just how it works, from my experience. And then they, of course, say, that's very philosophical from you, Jason. I agree with you, though. I get the impression that they're trying to low-key diss me in this comment. I could be wrong. And again, folks, I don't take anything personally. Um what magical fluid process thinks about me or doesn't think about me, I don't really give a shit. I just like to know where I stand with folks. There are those of you out there who enjoy free stuff. You think everything should be free. Everything should be handed to you. Another way to put that would be some folks feel like they're entitled to something, that they don't need to invest anything or give anything back. It's always take, take, take. Everything's a choice. If that's how you feel about things, that's how you feel about things. But I will say this. I have much gratitude and I'm very blessed for those folks who actually do give back. 
who actually do give back value and are thankful to me for the effort and blood, sweat, and tears that I've put into this channel and the videos and all that stuff. And they decide to give a little something back that is actually a practical value that will help me to keep this channel flowing smoothly through the sea of space. I'm very appreciative of that. And for those folks that are all about the free stuff, like magic fluid process, I'm thankful to you too. Because you're here giving me something to talk about and the opportunity to teach other more serious folks about the rule one, rule equal. What you put in is what you get out. Thanks for watching, folks. Thank <laughs> you.